the difference between school and life. In school, we're taught a lesson, then given a test. In life, we're given a test that teaches us a lesson. The result? Well, we have young people. Young people, just like me, graduating with certificates, with, which in many cases are a mere indication of seat time served. Here's a thought. The average four-year-old asks 100 questions per day. Most kindergarten students think of themselves as artists. As students, when we well and truly get stuck, or may even say trapped, in our current education system, we come to understand that it's more important to have the right answer than to ask a creative and unique question. We begin to believe that we're at school to merely absorb information rather than to create and to apply it. I'd like to invite each and every one of you back to when you were an eight-year-old. You're in your favorite place doing your favorite thing. For me, I was in my bedroom, blue walls covered in world maps, and all around me, on the floor, with stacks and stacks of Lego. I loved it. It allowed me to create, it allowed me to build things. But most importantly, it allowed me to experiment. There was no right or wrong way of doing it. Back in primary school, though, there was most definitely a right and wrong way of doing it. I picked the wrong way. You see, when the teacher asked me to say, paint a picture, I'd be painting the walls. When the teacher asked me to draw a picture, I'd be snapping and throwing the pencils. And when the teacher asked me to say, be quiet in an assembly or an exam, I'd make these weird humming sounds. I got a crazy kick out of it because the teachers never knew where I was coming from. <laughs> All good things must come to an end. And within a few years spell, I'd been suspended heaps, was on the verge of being expelled, wasn't hugely academically focused, and according to my teachers, had clear learning difficulties. I visited occupational therapists, I visited speech therapists, but nothing worked. Getting something out of me was like punching blood out of a stone. Impossible. I love technology, though, and was truly inspired by people like Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, and Steve Jobs. I used to wake up at 1, 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning to watch these amazing people launch their products that would one day change the world. So one day I thought, you know what, that sounds kind of cool. I want to change the world as well. I was 11, and to be quite honest, I had no clue how to change the world. I was the tech generation, so I Googled it, and a whole heap of results came up. <laughs> Things like plant a garden, donate blood, save humanity, and become an entrepreneur. I was like, alrighty, well, first of all, I'm not legally allowed to donate blood. I was 11. I'm not, what's planting a garden going to do? What does saving humanity even mean? And what's that funny word? Fast forward a couple of months, I started my very first business, a tech blog for kids by kids. I was 11, and within the first couple of months, we were getting over 100,000 hits per day, $10 per day from advertisements. At the age of 11, I thought that was kind of cool. At the age of 13, I was introduced to Tony Robbins. How many people have heard of Tony Robbins? Say I. Fantastic. So quite a few of you. So I was 13. My parents said, hey, do you want to come to one of his conferences slash seminars? I said first, hey, no way. I'm your only son. Do you really want your only son walking across fire and breaking boards? They said yes, booked me anyway. And after walking across that burning hot fire with no shoes, no nothing, the things I thought were impossible came completely fucking possible. And I went from the suspended schoolboy to budding educational pioneer. At the age of 13, I started 56 Creations, a combination of my two childhood passions, my love for Lego and my love for ICT. The result? Well, the result was a Lego for the 21st century. Kids build their very own tablets, as easy as a puzzle, as fun as a computer game. Now, inevitably, with starting a business, we faced a few challenges, the first one being incorporation. I wasn't legally allowed to be a director, so I had to convince my dad that this was an idea worth solving. I had to find an investor that could help fund my ambition, a team that could help turn my vision into reality. Now, thankfully, we did, and to date, we've worked with over 42,000 kids in both privileged and underprivileged communities around the world. Now I'm six, actually, no, I turned 17 yesterday. I'm 17 years old, studying my final year of high school. And the gaps between my traditional education and my life outside of the classroom has been pretty clear. And what I wanted to share with you today are 
are a few things on how we together as educators, as parents, grandparents, can prepare our young people for the challenges they will face in today's world. Now, it's also been clear over the past couple of years, the fact, years is the fact that knowledge in today's world is worthless. Knowledge carries no real competitive advantage over anyone anymore. The world no longer cares about what you know. What the world cares about is what you do with what you know. The first one is digital literacy. STEM skills, so your science, technology, engineering, and mathematics are the future. According to the Foundation for Young Australians, the need for digital literacy skills in the workplace have increased by over 212% over the past three years. When I heard that, I thought that was quite staggering because I don't believe a lot of young people are indeed digitally literate. Yes, we know how to use a computer. Yes, we know how to use a phone. But do we know how to program it? Do we know what's inside it? In more cases than not, the answer is no. And I fundamentally believe that young people cannot simply play with and use technology, but they must learn to create and build it. Now, when I say this, I have a lot of young people come up to me and be like, hey, I don't want to be a computer scientist. I don't want to be a computer programmer. And that's OK, because I do recognize the fact that some kids will ultimately just want to use their hands and build awesome stuff. And that's OK. What I'm advocating is that every single child should have a very basic understanding into the world of computer science and into the world of computer programming. Number two. Number two is creative problem solving. Creative problem solving is so important. And society in this day and age is so focused on the end result, not the process, the fruit, not the tree. As human beings, we are naturally creative creatures. We want to create. As Dr. Seuss once said, why fit in when you were born to stand out? Or in simple terms, be a Fruit Loop in a world full of wheat bix I think creat creativity and individuality, enterprising and problem solving is so important. And the way I think we can teach this, well, I think we can teach creativity in the classroom through something called a creative session or a free time Friday. As a student, I can tell you we're super unproductive on a Friday afternoon. So instead of making us do some work, why don't we give a creative session, a time where we give young people the opportunity to create and innovate. While some kids will use and abuse it like any subject, for the ones that don't, they may learn a new skill, make a new friend, ignite a new passion. And for those people, I think Free Time Friday is such an important, important thing to implement. And finally, number three. Number three is business camp. We have music camp, we have football camp. We have every other type of camp except business camp, a camp where we go out and get kids to sell shit for a couple of days. It does not matter what they sell, it does not matter how much they make. What matters is that constant iteration process, trialing then failing. Jan Owen, the CEO of the Foundation for Young Australians, introduced me to a term called for learning. Failing while simultaneously learning. For learning. There's absolutely nothing wrong with failure. What matters is the fact that we learn from it, we embrace it, and take the opportunity to reflect on it so we don't make the same mistake over and over again. Through something like a business camp, students will learn the soft skills, communication, public speaking, networking. It will throw them into a real-world setting where they can lose, the way they can learn these fundamental life skills, regardless of what field you want to enter. With that said, I'd like to leave you with one final quote today. As Albert Einstein once said, true intelligence is not about knowledge, but imagination. Thank you. <laughs>